So I recently had a moment in the studio where I thought I'd had an acid trip. I switched from listening to music to listening to podcasts recently about mythology. I finished painting a picture and took headphones off and started to feel slightly sick. And then for about an hour and a half, it felt like I was actually tripping. And the entire reason that I make work kind of opened up, which was bizarre. But it turns out that I thought I was just telling bits of stories because I find stories interesting. But I, what I've actually been doing sort of unconsciously is recreating my own version of a mythology that humanity have kind of been exploring since they were able to for thousands of years. And it is connected with heroic archetype of basically how to act in the world. And so the character, Megan, who I paint, is sort of an example of how I think it's good to act in the world. First, I did a degree in fine art and then came out of that thinking, how on earth does anyone make a living out of that? Because I invented a 15th century French philosopher with a set of beliefs about how to extract truth from the world and made found diary pages from his work. I found that difficult to sell it quite. I enjoyed it, but it was tricky. So anyway, finished that, came back home and sort of going back to the kind of images that I'd been making before I went to university and, and eventually started tying the two together. And that's when work started taking this direction. And I entered a painting into the Leamington Open Art Festival and someone saw it and they were just setting up a publishing company and said, did I want to have a go selling stuff through them? So I tried that for a bit, which was fun. And it was quite interesting seeing how that side of the world works. And then that wasn't making enough money to make a living. So I started buying the prints off them as though I was a gallery and selling them myself all over the Midlands doing market stores, which was great fun. So then I moved to London after about four years of doing that and started selling at Spicklefields Art Market, all the while selling online and getting my sort of website more developed. And then the big kind of moment of exposure came when my work was on the Junior Apprentice about six years ago. The team that chose my artwork went on to win the task. So Alan should have said my name in the boardroom about 40 times, which was great. That helped quite a lot. After that, I started putting on my own shows and renting spaces and renting galleries myself because with, with sort of the reach of social media, what I was doing on Facebook and Instagram, it felt like it was doing more than being in a gallery on a high street was sort of doing to get out there. And, it's, and instead of giving 50% of the way to a gallery, if you sort of put a massive chunk of that into PR and marketing and doing all that stuff, you sort of, I think, may get better results. It feels like that at the moment. Pricing is really difficult. And it's also quite difficult working outside of an established gallery system you kind of have to do your own research. If you've got a gallerist, they can kind of do that for you and they get a sense of what things are going for and what similar things are going for. But if, if you're independent, you have to, I think, just take a leap of faith initially and then and then go from there, really. There's a sort of golden rule that I, I've heard throughout my career so far, which is you can't ever put your prices down. But that sort of feels like it traps you a little bit. And I think that's quite unfair advice to put out there from big galleries because you hear about sort of price adjustments in the big art world all the time and ultimately if you're buying something it is just as well as being whatever it means to you it is ultimately a thing in the world that someone has to afford and like stuff goes down in price all the time that's probably the biggest challenge of making a living doing it is finding new people to show and sell it to i think doing market stores felt like it was fun I realized recently that doing that for kind of six years actually set me up an enormous kind of client base really because the amount of people that you meet in a, in a day you can sort of give away 200 300 cards and then you realize yeah five years later that actually you've been marketing yourself really hard out in the open and talk to people in like a really personal lovely way it's very easy to tell people starting out that they should value what they do in their time and it's very hard to actually feel that when you're first starting out and people ask you to do all sorts of things for free and for your portfolio. And I think you just have to keep making work. Everything else will get there eventually. You just have to keep making stuff that comes from you and not someone else.